Hello, it's Keisha Williams, the Science Mentor, and today we're going to talk about stoichiometry, particularly molar mass, mole to mole, and grams to grams conversions. Before we get started, let's talk about the main conversions that we're going to deal with and the steps involved, including where you're going to find the information to complete the conversion factors. The first conversion is when we're converting from moles to moles. Basically, you're provided mole A and asked to convert to mole B or vice versa. For this one, you're going to use what's called a molar ratio, and we get that information from looking at the balanced chemical equation. The second type of conversion we're going to do today is when we're converting from moles to grams or grams to moles. So basically you may be given moles of substance A and asked to convert to grams of substance B or vice versa. This you will use your molar mass and you get that information from your periodic table. These equations generally takes up to two steps. So make sure you have your periodic table handy for these types of problems. The third type of conversion is when we're going from grams of one type of substance to grams of a second substance. So you may be given grams of substance A and asked to convert to grams of substance B. You use both molar mass and mole ratio for these. So these usually take about three steps to complete. Here's our first question. How many moles of oxygen will be formed for 1.65 moles of potassium chlorate? We have a balanced chemical equation. The first thing you want to do is always check your chemical equation to make sure that it's balanced. That's going to be very important. Then we're going to determine what is given and what we want to find. In this case, we see that we're given 1.65 moles of potassium chlorate, and we want to find how many moles of oxygen is formed. Once we figured out our given and where we want to go, let's set up our multiplication grid. This is an important step because it helps us keep track of what we have and where we're converting to. It helps us keep track of our units. So the first thing we do is put our what is given on the ledge, out here on the ledge, and then we're going to put where we want to go on the other side. We are given moles of potassium chlorate and we want to convert that into moles of oxygen. Since we're doing moles of one substance to moles of another substance, we want to use our mole to mole ratio. At the bottom, we want to put the moles that we want to cancel out. So in this case, we are canceling out moles of potassium chlorate. And that means our moles of oxygen will be at the top. And if you notice, we're not using potassium chloride in this particular problem. It is not one of our givens and it is not what we've been asked to find. So do not worry about potassium chloride. To determine a ratio, we look at the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. Potassium chlorate has a coefficient of two and oxygen has a coefficient of three. Once we have our ratio, now we can just complete our multiplication and our division. Multiply across the top, take that answer and divide by two, and you will get 2.48 moles of oxygen. So let's summarize this. We have one step. We're switching from moles of potassium chlorate to moles of oxygen using molar ratio. Let's look at the second question. How many moles of iron oxide is produced from 42.7 grams of iron? We have our balanced chemical equation. We don't have to worry about anything there. Now we need to determine our given, which is 42.7 grams of iron, and what we're looking for, which is the moles of iron oxide. The next step, set up your multiplication grid and put what is given out here on the ledge. Next, we will put what we're looking for at the end so that we have our paths established we see that we're looking we're going from grams of iron to moles of iron oxide anytime you're giving grams of a substance you want to convert those grams into moles to do that you're going to use molar mass you're going to use your periodic table to determine how many grams of iron for every mole then you're going to set that up your molar mass up into your multiplication table to cancel out grams. So grams will be at the bottom in order to cancel that out and mole will be at the top. 
if you look at your periodic table, we have 55.85 moles, I'm sorry, 55.85 grams for every mole of iron. Now that we have moles of iron, we can convert that to moles of iron oxide. Now remember, when we're going from moles of substance A to mole of substance B, we use the mole to mole ratio. Since we need to cancel out iron, we're going to put that at the bottom, which will leave iron oxide at the top. Now all we have to do is look at our coefficients in the balanced chemical equation to determine our numbers. For every four moles of iron, we have two moles of iron oxide. We know we're done with our setup because the last units at the top that is not crossed out match the units that we want. So now we just do the math and your answer would be 1.53 moles of iron oxide. Let's summarize these steps. Anytime you're given grams, then you want to convert the grams to moles using molar mass. Once you have moles, you can switch from one species to the other, in this case from moles of iron to moles of iron oxide using your molar ratio. Then you do the math. So this is our third type of problem. How many grams of oxygen are needed to react with 125 grams of iron? We're using the same equation, but this time we're given 125 grams of iron and we want to find grams of oxygen. Now we set up our multiplication grid, put what is given out here on the ledge and put where we want to go over to the other side. This sets up our path. Now we're given grams of iron. We know that anytime we're given grams first, we find the molar mass. Looking at the periodic table, we know that there's 55.85 grams of iron for every mole. We're going to put grams at the bottom so that it cancels out, which puts moles at the top, and then we add our numbers. The next thing we want to do is convert moles of iron into moles of oxygen. This is the substance we want to go to. Then we use our mole to mole ratio. Since we want to cancel out iron, iron will be at the bottom, and where we want to go will be at the top. So now we go up to our balanced chemical equation to find our coefficients to plug in. It does not matter that they're on the same side, it still is a mole to mole ratio. So we have four moles of iron for every three moles of oxygen. So the four will match up to the iron and three match up to the oxygen, that's our mole to mole ratio. Now we see that we have oxygen, which is what we want, but we need to convert moles to grams for our final answer. So we have another step, which will be using molar mass to convert moles to grams. We know that we need to put moles at the bottom because this is what we want to cancel out, and we want to leave grams at the top. You go back to your periodic table, but keep in mind, oxygen is a diatomic molecule, so you have two atoms of oxygen for every molecule. You want to take that mass and multiply it by two in order to give you 32 grams of oxygen. Now we can do the math. Multiply everything across top for your numerator, then multiply everything across the bottom for a denominator. Take that numerator, divide it by the denominator, and you should get 53.7 grams of oxygen. To summarize these steps, anytime you start with grams, you want to convert that to moles using molar mass in the periodic table. Once you have moles, we're gonna we switch from moles of iron to moles of oxygen using the mole to mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. Now, once we had the moles of this of the um, substance we wanted, we needed to switch moles to grams, and we did that by using molar mass. To summarize everything, when we are given moles of one substance and asked to convert that to moles of another substance, that took one step and we used the molar ratio from the balanced chemical equation. When we're given grams of one substance and asked to switch to moles, we have two steps. You're going to convert grams to moles with the molar mass and then switch from moles of A to moles of B using the mole to mole ratio. Now, if you're given moles and asked to switch to grams, then you just swap the order of these steps. In our last example, we was given grams of substance A and asked to switch that to grams of substance B. 
So we converted grams of substance A into moles using the molar mass in a periodic table. And then we switched moles of A to moles of B using the molar mole ratio and the balanced chemical equation. Once we had moles of B, then we used molar mass and switched moles to grams.